Good afternoon, I'm Dr. Silva, and I'm going to talk today about Buspirone, Buspar. Buspar is a medication that is, it's an interesting medication. It's a kind of off of a class by itself. It is a partial agonist at the serotonin 1A presynaptic autoreceptor. Okay, and so the important thing to know about that is that when you block that receptor, you get some anti-anxiety and antidepressant action, but it's very weak. By itself, I think buspirone is kind of useless, to be honest. And, and the FDA hasn't approved it to treat any condition. It's not approved to treat major depression. It's not approved to treat generalized anxiety disorder. There's no evidence that shows that it's effective against placebo. But it is approved by the FDA in a very vague way for the short-term management of anxiety, quote-unquote, and also to manage anxiety conditions. So the FDA is being very nonspecific about it. It's saying you can use Buspar to treat anxiety disorders, just kind of a grab bag. But in real world experience, in my experience, I can tell you that as monotherapy, it is, it's not useful. People that come to me that have anxiety that need me to give them medication for their anxiety, they're not going to do very well with Buspar. Now, if we add Buspirone, I think that it's a better booster, and so it could be an adjunctive agent. That's very useful. What I actually use it for almost exclusively is to reverse anorgasmia, is to reverse the sexual dysfunction that is induced by other medications that I'm giving, SSRIs, because of that 5-HT1A partial agonism. Buspirone improves sexual dysfunction. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It does seem to be dose dependent and you have to dose the Buspar at least twice a day, sometimes three times a day. So it's a little inconvenient. Also, it's affected by food. So whether you take it on an empty stomach or with food, you can do either way, but you need to be consistent about it. So if you take it on an empty stomach two or three times a day, you need to continue taking it on an empty stomach so you get the same absorption versus if you take it with a snack or with a meal two or three times a day, then you need to always take it like that so you can have consistent absorption. But I use it just as needed in gentlemen who are complaining about orgasmia, and they can even use it on a PRN basis just as kind of as needed, although it's going to work better if you have steady state levels. And so if anorgasmia is really a significant problem, then it really is a medication that you need to take every day. So it's not convenient to take it, but it does work in probably, I don't know, half of the patients that I try it in. And also it can only help boost the antidepressant, anti-anxiety agent that you're using. So it's also inexpensive. It is well tolerated. The side effects are very nonspecific. Nausea and headaches and GI, gastrointestinal upset, diarrhea, those kinds of things. Any medication can cause those. And But buspirone is not notorious for causing those. And I usually don't have patients complaining of, of dizziness or constipation or those sorts of non-specific side effects. What's great about it is that it doesn't have sexual dysfunction and in fact helps to alleviate it and in particular the ability to climax as opposed to desire and also it, there's no weight gain with it. And again, partially stimulating those receptors can obviate weight gain, which is very common with other antidepressants. So it combines well with other antidepressants as a booster to reverse sexual dysfunction and to stave off or obviate weight gain. A partial agonist means that this medication, this molecule stimulates that receptor, but it doesn't do so completely relative to serotonin itself. So this is a serotonin subtype of receptors. It responds to serotonin. Serotonin binds to it and stimulates it. That's our standard. And so when we compare buspirone to serotonin, buspirone will bind to these receptors, but it only stimulates them partially compared to serotonin. If you compare them, if you have a full agonist, then if you have a partial agonist, relatively, you, that relative to the serotonin, it, uh, it is actually diminishing the activity of serotonin. So serotonin is floating around. Presumably there's more of it because you're also using an SSRI and all that serotonin is attaching to that receptor. But then you come along with a partial agonist that competes for that. The net effect is that you get a diminished effect of serotonin because 
Serotonin can't bind with the same frequency because there's something in the way. And what's in the way is not an antagonist, but it's only a partial agonist. So relatively, it's all, it's all relative. But the long and the short of it is, it's a well-tolerated, inexpensive medication that sometimes really works to help bring back the orgasm. And it can only help the mood. By itself, it's useless. I see a lot of times, I see patients, almost every patient that comes to me who needs their medication regimen revamped because they're still having anxiety despite the medications they're taking. All of them that happen to be taking buspirone, especially those that are on buspirone monotherapy, that's all they're taking. Even the patients that are on another regimen that have had buspirone added or that are taking buspirone, some of them taking them as needed, PRN, which I don't recommend for anxiety, but I've seen it and they all tell me the same thing. It doesn't work, it's not working, it's not helping. And they're not even comparing it to Xanax. They're comparing it to their SSRI or other medications that they've taken, or even hydroxyzine, which is an antihistamine that's uh, visceral, which is prescribed a lot of times on an as-needed basis for anxiety. So it combines well, but by itself, 